First of all, my compliments to Ilya Stambler for an excellent organization of this uh, meeting. And uh, thanks for inviting me and opportunity to present our book written together with an old friend of mine, Hachik Moradian, from the Institute of Gerontology in Kyiv. The book was published just a month ago in the framework of the series Healthy Aging and Longevity, though to be honest, I uh, do not understand uh, to the end what does it mean healthy aging. Uh, but never mind. Uh, our thanks also to Suresh Ratan for his gentle support of this work. In fact, it's uh, the first attempt to systematically analyze what rejuvenation is and its relationships with aging, longevity, origin of life, and the existence of life as is. Many ideas in this book are to a great extent hypothetical, it's naturally, uh, but nevertheless, we believe that during the last decade, research on rejuvenation has acquired a realistic shape and become a subject of scientific analysis. It would not be an exaggeration to say that right now a new science is emerging rejuvenology. The book consists of 12 chapters and covers a wide spectrum of issues from the evolutionary aspects of, uh, of the origin of life, rejuvenation, immortality, and aging to the evidence that biological time is reversible. Here I will mostly address the conceptual points without going into detail regarding the mechanisms of rejuvenation and the rejuvenative interventions. So let's start from the beginning. Rejuvenation is not fantasy, it's not a nice dream. It is a fundamental and imminent feature of life. The very existence of life would be impossible without rejuvenation. It means that in particular, rejuvenation appeared first and uh, aging appeared later. And it appeared as an adaptive mechanism for elimination of defective protocells from the population. However, in multicellular organisms, aging from the useful tool for quick, quick removal of the cellular damage turned into the most destructive factor. Then the main role of rejuvenation uh, has become to rid off the load of aging and minimize damage transfer across generation. Whatever, aging is not inevitable. Indeed, if the rate of rejuvenation is higher than the rate of damage accumulation, the cells will not age. It's exactly what has happened in protozoa and some uh, eukaryotic organisms. Uh, but uh, anyway, it's not fully, uh, fully used in uh, most multicellular organisms. Um, one of the maybe the most ancient um, rejuvenative mechanism is damage dilution due to a high replication rate and also excretion of wanted substances 
through the release of extracellular vesicles. But let's relax for the moment and uh, remember the, 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 the Sir Terence Pratchett who said, in ancient times, cats were worshipped as gods. They have not forgotten this. If you have any doubts regarding this statement, please take a look at two our faculty cats, Ginger the first and Cat Hypo. Uh, hypo. So they are very serious, as you see. But what is common between cats and cells? Uh, once all cells were immortal, and they have not forgotten this. Moreover, mature cells remember how to come back to youth and stemness. Putting in other words, the basic element uh, of the living system, the cell, knows how to rejuvenate and is potentially immortal. And the important point is that activation of rejuvenation program could be, it could be activated by relatively simple, simple means. Why do multicellular organism consisting of potentially immortal Hmm. Okay, it's not okay. Uh, consistent of potentially immortal units have surrendered to aging so easily. At the moment, we do not have an answer to this question. Yet there are a few exceptions when multicellular species show no sign of aging or only negligible senescence with lifespan exceeding hundreds and thousand years. <coughs> we called them sechel, species exceeding human longevity. Uh, by the way, in Yiddish, sechel means intelligence. <laughs> okay. The analysis revealed <coughs> a number of common features that could contribute to their extreme lifespan. Uh, we should pay attention that these species, uh, most of them at least, live in an intermittent or permanent hypoxic environment, often combined with hypercapnia, hyper, hypoxic, hypercapnic environment. They, are, they have a low metabolic rate and uh, maybe to a great extent it is um, associated with their hypoxic, hypercapnic environment. Uh, Another important point is that these species uh, are able to preserve a pool and high functionality of stem cells, which eventually ensures a high regenerative ability. And uh, this feature is also associated, to some extent, to hypoxic, hypercapnic environment. The major rejuvenative events in mammals, in particular, are primarily associated with gametogenesis, with the zygote uh, genome activation, and early embryo development. The third and the final rejuvenative event starts from pre-implanted blastocyst and ends at early implantation. 
Note, please, that hypoxic, hypercapnic environment is important to embryonic stem cells and early, early embryogenesis in, gen in general. This is especially true for embryonic stem cells of the pre-implanted blastocysts when hypoxia, hypercapnia, reaches its peaks, thus minimizing oxidative damage and preventing the embryonic stem cells from premature differentiation. All in all, this creates ideal conditions for rejuvenation. A few years ago, we wrote that these short periods of embryonic stem cell life provides a unique opportunity for the last minute correction of the cellular damage before embryonic stem cells start to differentiate. Uh, needless to say how much it's uh, important. The very fact that life still exists and the accumulated damage doesn't pass on from generation to generation is to a great extent granted by the last minute correction of embryonic stem cells. Uh, and we are pleased to say that our hypothesis gained a strong support from the studies of Professor Gladyshev's group, who recently showed that after the last minute correction, embryo reaches the minimal biological age, so-called ground zero. Uh, should be stressed that rejuvenation could take place not only in early embryogenesis. Various interventions, I will not go into details now, showed the very possibility to decrease the biological age later in life as well. This simplified model illustrates the relationships between aging, anti-aging, and rejuvenation. Where the water well uh, level in the bath reflects vitality or probability to stay alive. Damage make holes in the bath. Water flows out. and vitality decreases. However, the organism has tool to fix this problem, at least in part. Thus, it can prevent or slow down further leakage, but per se, it cannot restore the level of the water. Vitality could be elevated only if the water tap is open. If this is aging, this is anti-aging, and as you guess, this is rejuvenation. And something really optimistic, human knowledge and instrumental power increases exponentially, <coughs> where the complexity of aging and rejuvenation problems is a constant in entity. This is a good reason to believe that sooner or later, human skills will be enough for resolving any biomedical problem, anti-aging and rejuvenation included. In these coordinates, there is only one unknown. When? Will it take 30 years, 50 years, 100 years or more? Maybe it occurred yesterday, you, or we just missed the latest news. Welcome, rejuvenation. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for your book. I read it today. It's, uh, I think it's uh, a minor revolutionary, very impressive. But, Thank you uh, very much. I have a very egoistic interest in this, considering my organism. So, um, since you start with very fundamental things, 
which are microscopic. I'm a physicist. And in physics, there is a divide between microscopic effects and macroscopic effects. They are not completely reducible one to the other. How do you see the bridge between the small life of cells and uh, you make a very strong emphasis on adult stem cells in your book as a key uh, part of microscopy of our body, bridge to the fact that we are actually also built from macroscopic systems, muscular system, uh, cardiovascular system, brain and neurological system. This is a little bit lacking, the bridge between microscopy and the, our organs. And the, all the organisms that you mentioned, with the exception with the Greenlandic shark and uh, uh, some kind of whale, their organs are relatively simple. How do you see in your imagination or your intuition how can it be bridged to regulate that our organs will less deteriorate? Because we're not built of cells. After all, we're macroscopic systems. That's my question. I think you answer your question. Uh, <laughs> I mean uh, the following. Uh, sure, it will be the best way to rejuvenate the whole organism. But uh, maybe we are not uh, clever enough to do it at the moment. But what we can do, uh, rejuvenate uh, step by step, uh, say, uh, maybe uh, specific organs, maybe the organ that uh, need uh, the most uh, treatment or something like this. And uh, there are some uh, um, findings, observations, that it could be done. You know, uh, there are, uh, say, <coughs> interventions that can uh, improve uh, the, the, the liver function uh, and uh, Mm, the treatment actually is based on that ancient um, rejuvenation mechanism of uh, dilution, dilution the damage. Uh, as uh, Convoy and uh, colleagues uh, showed, uh, only a single, uh, single um, exchange of replace of uh, uh, blood plasma by uh, saline and uh, albumin uh, can significantly uh, improve the, 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 the liver function, actually making it uh, uh, younger. Uh, so, uh, if we are talking about the near future, uh, it may be uh, a rejuvenation or at least improvement, uh, critical improvement of functions and morphology of uh, certain organs. I mean, not the whole, the whole body, but if we will be lucky, maybe also the whole. Uh, and uh, I didn't uh, actually almost, uh, I didn't talk about uh, stem cells. Um, in fact, uh, in, 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 uh, in mammals it could be of uh, uh, special importance and uh, uh, the really important point is that we have pluripotent adult stem cells in our body, so-called muse cells, uh, discovered by Marie de Zava. Um, and uh, another way is uh, cell reprogramming. Uh, cell reprogramming not only by Yamanaka factors, it uh, may uh, bring a lot of problems, 
but maybe more um, by using the so-called small molecules, uh, small mo defined small molecules that uh, can work uh, actually as transcription factors and make uh, uh, induced uh, pluripotency. Moreover, we don't need to, to get this uh, stage, induced pluripotency, even uh, one, two stage uh, toward stemness will be also good for renewal the, the, the tissues and so on. The only, you know, uh, not so good news, this uh, book, uh, the price of this book is much higher than the price of that handbook of longevity. Almost twice. Where can we buy it? Ah, uh, uh, no, Amazon, uh, you will get uh, a rebit. <laughs> you can <laughs> buy uh, um, directly from uh, Springer and uh, in electronic form or uh, no, regular, no, uh, usual form, or maybe you may, uh, you're Israeli. Why buy if you can get without payment? I can send you by PDF, PDF, and that's all. <laughs> Just. You want to download this for free from Springer? Really? Absolutely legally, in PDF form. I did it today. Very strange business. I cannot understand. But, okay, thank you.